Okay, we're just gonna record this and see how it goes, okay? So if I make this it's not my fault. All right, let's go. Hello everybody, welcome to Chaz Dracot Media and welcome to the Tower Simulator 3 scheduler. I'm going to be messing about with this and just testing something out just to show you guys because since the last video I did, which was this one, I've had a lot of people asking about how you use the scheduler, how to get it to work and so on. I just want to show you what I've done with it and how I got it to work and then we're going to just go and play with it and just see if it does work, if whether I've uh, managed to muck it up or not. So, this is the scheduler. I'm going to move it over here and I might crop this in a weird way actually because the window is very, very big for this so bear with me. There we go. Right. This is the scheduler. So you select your airports here. <laughs> Heathrow. <laughs> Noy. We're going to be playing with Kalas today. We're going to be going to Las Vegas. And we're going to be using the airport database selector here. Now, as you can see, there's default and then there's Energist Design at the moment. But what I'm going to do is make my own. So I'm going to go into the game files, into airports, Kalas, databases. I'm just going to literally hit copy and paste on the Energist Design one and just call it Chaz Draycott. And that's all you need to do there. So inside that you still get the same schedules and airlines and whatever else back into the scheduler you can now if we oh maybe we need to uh close it and reopen it okay so back into kalas and there you go see chas draycott is now on there but the airplane database is still energy design read current schedule yep just click yes to that i've never even read that and that gives you the schedule so you can see look there's over 40 departures there's sort of 50 departures at about one o'clock there's 50 at about six o'clock so the blue is the departures yellow arrivals and then you've got the ga which nobody cares about what i'm going to do is change this to the start time as midnight so we're going to schedule the whole day here we're going to go for the whole day number of hours 24 hours uh, constant flight number and arrivals per hour no we want variable which then gives you this, the hourly profile here. And at the moment, you've got regular flights, 91 an hour. So that's sort of the maximum that it can go up to. We're going to start to drop this down here. So we're not going to have many at midnight. The times are down here. So we're not going to have many at midnight. One, two, three. We'll, just, we'll still have some. Four and then 5 a.m. We're going to start ramping it up a bit. Six we'll have a lot. Then seven, eight nine and then it's going to calm down a little bit in the day it's about lunchtime and it's going to chill out a bit and then later in the afternoon we're going to have it go up uh, you need to move your mouse somewhere like here some of these clear spaces and if you don't you do that and you need to scroll down which moves it over to the right some for some reason some of the little bits like that aren't the most polished thing in the world but at the end of the day it's a great bit of software and then we're going to drop it back down again towards the end of the day just like that and uh, then we're going to go save to file so we'll just save it as Kalas and then just Chaz Draycott and then we'll call it 24 hours. Okay, profile saved. So now that's got the sort of the wave of how many arrivals and departures are going to be in per hour on there. And we're going to scroll down a little bit here and you can select and exclude airlines and edit, edit, edit schedule statistics. So this gives you each airline and how many arrivals and departures there are, what percentage of the arrivals and departures they take up. And you can actually create these yourself. So how this looks is you go into edit and then you have the airline, where it's going to from this airport, and then how many times a day. So like how frequent that flight is. You choose what type of aircraft it is as well. You can choose multiple on there. What we're going to do, though, is go on a list that I have had before. I'll show you how to add an airline, actually, before I do that. So let's just say we want to do, I don't know, Ryanair. So we'll go RYR, add a flight. You can choose which terminal they go to as well. If not, it's just catch all and they'll go to every terminal. Uh, we'll go get them to EGCC. Oh, yeah, this is an important drop down to remember. Destinations all. It's a bit tricky like that. One thing that's weird about this software as well is you have to right click on stuff to get it to go away. Like I say, some of the sort of inputs and things that you would normally do on a PC don't really match up to this, but the guy's done a wonderful job on it. I think it's yeah, Jarek P that did this. EGCC, get it to Manchester. We'll have two flights a day. And again, right click it to no oh got to hit enter on that one rather than right click that doesn't matter you don't really choose that and then you can choose whether you want it to be a boeing 7378 max or 737 800 uh, you literally just click on them to select them or not and then right click when you're done with them and then it'll tell you that which is quite cool so you never always know what aircraft you're going to be getting you then have to tick it and then click apply if you don't tick it or that is zero before you click apply it will not add it in there and there you see ryanair is in there with two flights a day however I've already made one of these before, and we're going to use the one which is 
stat. I've got stat and stat exceed. I, I can't remember why I called them that. Uh, well, it's clearly not that one, is it? Because that's only 131 flights. There we go. So these are the airlines that I used at Zurich. So this is the set that you saw there. So we've got a lot of Ryanair flights, a lot of EasyJet flights, uh, a few Turkish in there as well, Iberia. There's a couple of heavies and things in there as well. So if we look at, for example, KLM, we've got one that's a Boeing 777, but then we've got the rest operated by a range of 737s as well. Locations or where they're going to don't really matter. I've not always made them perfectly realistic. I've just gone down the huge drop down of airports and just chosen random ones. We're going to click apply on that now. We've got our aircraft set in. That's the bit that takes the longest to do, I find. That takes a long, long time just to make sure you've got enough flights and the right airlines and stuff in that you want to have. Take some time with that and just pick stuff that you want and take a look through. You know, you can always check the aircraft folders within the game, uh, which whatever Energist Design have put in, and you can see what liveries and aircraft are available and so on. So we've got start time at midnight, 24 hours, 91 flights it says in there, and now we're going to click regenerate schedule with new flight numbers without removed airlines. And that's all we get. We get GA. So apparently we get one flight at that time and one flight at that time. So, yeah. God, now I've mucked it up, haven't I? Okay, so it seems I've actually broken the software somewhere there, so I'm going to reopen it again. Bear with me. Let's try that again, shall we? So, KLAS, up here. Chaz Draycott folder, there. We're going to read the current schedule, which is obviously not very good, because it's got one flight out and one flight back in. And when you look at the aircraft involved in that, I think it's just, yeah, it's just one airline. It's just Speedbird, which is British Airways. So we're going to load from file. We're going to put this set in there. So that's put all of our airlines back in, which is nice. That's what we want. It says there's 406 flights in there. We set this to midnight, 24 hours long. Oops, excuse me. I'm making a right meal of this. So now we go to this, and you can see, look, it thinks there's 406 flights an hour, which is not what we want, to be honest with you. So we're going to go for just a smaller number. We'll go for about 20 in the early hours of the day. And then at about 4 o'clock, we'll start ramping it up. Come back down a little bit in the middle of the day. Although it's not going to spread out that well, is it? Because that's clearly more than 400. We'll see. I can't grab hold of the thing. Scroll down to get to the last ones over here. Okay, I'm going to do that. We'll apply that. Now, there we go. That is more like it to me. So we've got a lot of arrivals and departures. Now we've got that. We've got our airline set, which is the bit that takes the longest. That's just done it now. When you've generated it, it's made the file. It's done the text file and put everything there. I'm not sure how it's going to work in terms of the terminals because I haven't messed with those at all. I'd recommend doing that yourself, like I said in my previous video. If you are going to play with the terminals file, you can just open it in Notepad and just change which airlines go in there yourself. You get a list in this program of what airlines you've added in, so you can just choose where they go. Anyway, let's open up the game and see how it looks and see how it plays. I always forget how loud that is. <laughs> okay, so straight over to Quick Play and down to Harry Reid International in Las Vegas. What did we say was the busy time of day? We're going to get him in on 26 left and we're going to go for, let's say, 10 a.m. Airport database Chaz Draycott. It's going to say not compatible because it always does. Stuff it straight in. Right then, we're in the tower. Let's just treat this like normal. We're not going to muck about too much. We're going to get everything lined up. Check this screen is all good get our arrivals on there. F4 is fine. Atis is Charlie. Thank you. Should we just take a look out the window? <laughs> There's no planes. Oh, there is. There's only British Airways. Ah. Are there British Airways flights into Las Vegas? I think there is, isn't there? Which is probably why there's a 77777 there. Okay, there's no other airlines because I didn't do the terminals file. Serves me right. Well, it gives me a reason to show you, basically. So we open the terminal CSV file with Notepad, and this is what we get given. So, yeah, as you can see, it's all the American Airlines. So you get the terminal, the airlines that are parked there, and then the gates that that includes. So we need to try and now put this together in terms of which airlines go where. I can't remember all of them that are on the list, so I'm going to reopen the scheduler, and we're going to have a look at what we've got. Okay, so if we look at the list of airlines, then we've got... A lot here. We've got Aegean, we've got whatever the hell that one is, Air France, Austrian, I think AWC is Titan, I think it is, British Airways, we've got AZA, I think that's Alitalia, we've got the Brussels Airlines, which is Bell, CFG, which is like Lufthansa Regional. So we know what we've got, we know what airlines are in there, uh, we're going to keep them all over on the left-hand side of the screen here, 
so we can see and what we need to do is get rid of all the current ones in there so it's a completely clean slate but this is the sort of stuff you have to do to make all these schedules work you have to go into the terminal files and mess with what airlines go where it's something i completely forgot to do you'll notice some of them have uh, speech marks so when there's more than one airline at a terminal you will get the speech marks in there just so it knows where to sort of apply the commas and so on which is what splits the data up in these things we're going to leave all the ga stuff down there and keep it how it is so terminal 1a had just one airline on it i think these are the sort of ones where we're going to have ryanair and easyjet if you have a star in front of the airline's three letter designation that basically means that it goes there as a priority rather than to other terminals so it sort of catches it into other terminals if uh, if that one is not available i hope that makes sense we're going to put the ezy in there as well for easy with a star next to it that's so we're going to treat that as easyjet sort of main terminal and then we're going to continue to add Ryanair and EasyJet on these because I've got a lot of them scheduled in in here. There's so many others in there, though, that we need to consider. So I think, if I'm honest with you, this is going to be a bit of a cheapskate way of doing it. I'm just going to put every single one in there and just throw everything at every terminal because at this point, I just want to get the video done and I want to show you how it works rather than do it all perfectly. I can fine-tune this further down the line. So we're going to put EWG... EXS, Easy's already been done, so we go to the next one, which is Finnair Foo. Two hours later. What I'm going to do now is put speech bubbles either side of that, or speech marks, I should say. Copy that, and I'm literally going to... Oh, I don't need to uh, put the speech marks in, actually, because they're already there. So in between all the speech marks, we're just going to copy everything into each... Oh, it's hurt my eyes. Into every terminal, so everyone can go everywhere. Or... There's an easy way of doing this, and I forgot about it. Bear with me. I mentioned a phrase earlier on called catch all. If you type in catch all, I think without the speech marks, it will literally just have everything in there. As, like anything that's not specified will go in there. Saves typing the whole lot out, doesn't it? Okay, we're going to try that. Let's go back into the game. I did say to a few people that these videos are not easy to plan and not easy to get right every single time because there's so many elements that I always overlook when I'm planning a video like this. So I just thought I'm going to get on and just try it and show you. So I really hope that this is making sense and I hope that it at least helps a little bit wherever it can in showing you how these processes work. We may get some error warnings and things come up on here saying that we can't find the roads to certain terminals or whatever. That just sometimes happens if you've got a bit of a mismatch of information. I'm not always sure what causes it, but still. It seems like the game works fine when that happens. So let's just let it load in and see if we can actually get some aircraft on the ramp this time. Because as you saw before, it was just the fact that all the American airlines were still in there at their terminals. And there was the occasional Speedbird bit for British Airways that was sort of parking them out of the way. So hopefully, we'll be alright. Now we're in the tower and I believe we can see aircraft, which is great news. So let's just take a second to get our screens and everything set up. Get the F2 screen set up there. F3, zoom out, move it over there. F4 is fine. And yes, we are all golden. So let's go and have a ganders at what planes we've got, shall we? And Lord, you look at this. It is rammed with European airlines. We've got Turkish, Portugal over there, Vuling, British Airways Air, Lingus A330, a Tiger Air 737, Eurowings, more A330s, a 767 300 from Iceland Air. Loads of stuff over here. There's an Egypt Air A320 on the end. Oh, my God, there's a lot of stuff. Whoa, frame rate. A 2E787 that's obviously going to be pushed back into all of that lot. Titan 757, my darling. Uh, we've got these two having a Royal Rumble fight over here. There's a Tarom A320-19 without any wheels. Iceland Air 757, that makes me happy as well. Got all sorts of stuff everywhere. Egypt Air A320neo, Lufthansa A321neo. So we've rammed it, basically, with flights. It is completely packed, which is great to see. So it means that it's all worked, and we have everything that we should. We've got all the EasyJet and Ryanair over here, look. This is where the Ryanair are. They're prioritizing that, although there's Ryanair... There's not as many Ryanair as I thought. It's all dominated by EasyJet over here. I would have thought that there'd be a bit more of a balance between those two airlines. For some reason, the Tarom A319 doesn't have any wheels on it. Is that a Hop Embraer? Yes, it is. There's even a Sun Express A320. I've not seen one of those before. Okay. Well, I'm happy. There's not many Ryanair. Not that Ryanair are my priority, but, I mean, we live in Europe, so, you know, as Well, we don't live in Europe anymore, but technically, when you're over here, over this side of the pond, all you see is Ryanair. So, that's a large tag you've got there, son. 
Tomjet 5852 heavy, pushback approved. Expect runway 26 right. Round. So that right. is the 787 that I just said is going to push back into everything as well. That's weird that it's the main aircraft I picked up on pushing back. You can see their engines fluttering away as they start up. There's another Tiger Air 737 down there. I know my camera is jumping around. I can see it out the corner of my eye. No arrivals yet, but that's absolutely fine and no problem whatsoever. There's the 2E787 pushing back now. Hasn't actually pushed back into all the other aircraft as I expected it would, so that's nice. That's a Kuwait A320 Neo there, that's nice. Oh, we have an arrival which is going to be Shamrock 287. Are you a big boy? No, you are an Airbus A321 Neo. There's actually one that goes from Manchester, an A321 Neo that goes with Aer Lingus all the way to New York, which is quite an interesting flight to have on an A321 Neo. It's nice to see that it's packed though. And it's nice that I've actually managed to make it work. So hopefully, with all of the mistakes and everything I've made, you can piece it together and figure out which bits work and which bits don't. So Shamrock will call up when they get to this red line here. So we don't need to worry about them anytime soon. As you're going to see, it's probably going to be a bit quiet at this point. But still, we've at least got aircraft in our airport and filling it up as well. And, it's, you know, like I say, the long bit is filling out the list of airliners, where you want them to go and what airlines and, and all that. And you can spend a lot of time on the terminals file. And one thing that's worth doing with said terminal file as well, which I think is doable at this airport, yes, you get gate numbers on the floor in this game, so you can see which gates apply to which terminal. So you know where to put aircraft. So you can have a look around, and you would see that, you know, this terminal here has gates... What's that, B? Yeah, B15, 19, 20, and so on. You would be able to see that this is terminal B, so you know that if you want... A certain airline to be parked there or a couple of airlines parked there you know which ones to apply to that area tomjet 5852 heavy runway 26 right via charlie bravo runway two six there, right via charlie. he goes bravo. there Tom goes our 787 and we've also got speedbird on final as well which is british airways 964 shamrock will call up any moment now las vegas tower shamrock 5287 final two six left beautiful Shamrock 5287, runway 26 left, clear to land. It was the right runway, wasn't it? Yeah. Runway 26 left, clear to land. Shamrock 5287. Cool. Las Vegas ground, ICE Air 4013 with information alpha, requesting push and start. You're a 757, aren't you? Yes, it is. ICE Air 4013, push back approved, expect runway 26 right. Tom Jet's just getting to the end of the runway now. But I don't care because, look, there is the Iceland Air 757-200. Gorgeous livery, classy aircraft. I'm going to be so sad when 757s go, and it's going to be within the next few years. I mention it a lot. I mention it in my vlogs in these videos as well. But I'm going to be very, very sad when my favourite airliner is not as frequent anymore. A lot of American carriers still use them, but I know that they're phasing them out also. And it's a humongous shame because there's not really a hole in the market for it anymore. You know, it, the body is so narrow, they can't expand it and do much more with it. They can't make them much longer than the 757-300 either way, so... Yeah, unfortunately, it's sort of backed into a corner in the market, which is a real shame. We also had Speedbird calling up. Speedbird 964, runway 26 left, clear to land. And then we'll have EasyJet coming up after them as well. Runway 26 left, clear to land. Uh, we can get Tomjet out of there, actually. Tomjet 5852 heavy, runway 26 right, clear for immediate takeoff. Upon reaching altitude 1000, contact departure. Because they're on 26 right, not 26 left, so I don't need him to wait and sit there. And there is Shamrock coming in. Let's go have a look. Not now, love. We're staring at a 787. There you can hear Shamrock. Well, no, it's probably over that side of the screen for you lot. If you've got stereo headphones or whatever. Yep. There's EasyJet on its way in. But, you know, the underlining thing is how cool is this tool? You know, how cool is it that it makes it work like this? You know, you can have these airlines, these aircraft, wherever you want in the world. Take a bit of time to do it, you know. It means you don't have to write a spreadsheet manually. There goes the 2E7879 on its way out. ICE Air 4013, runway 26 right via Bravo. Easy 315, runway 26 left, clear to land. And from then on, you just treat it like any other schedule. You know, you don't have to play the game differently. You don't have to do anything differently. You can just put whatever aircraft you want where you want them at whatever airport. You can 
play about with the terminals and so on. You can go into as much detail with it as you want, to be fair. There's a sort of minimum set amount of detail that you need to carry into it to make it work, obviously. Uh, you don't need all the knowledge in the game, or you don't need all the knowledge in the world of this game to make it work, but it obviously helps to sort of know it a little bit and how it applies that information. So, it's going to be a very short video, this one. I know there's not going to be actually much playing of the game, but I just wanted to very quickly bust one of these videos out to show you guys how to use the schedule very roughly and get it working on there because if an idiot like me can do it then you can do it as well i'm very sure so thank you very much for watching i'll record a lot more with this in future i know that especially with this set of aircraft because we all know it's the sort of aircraft i love and i see very often but for now thank you very much for watching and I B line six one four eight with information alpha requesting push and start i'll see you in the next episode